This is the part two of analysis of variance. So we have three different groups, group one, two, and three. And we are going to compute a mean for each of these three. What ANOVA is doing is testing to see if these groups as a whole are different. We have an independent variable. These are called factors. These are nominal, so we have three or more groups. We could do two groups too. And we also have a dependent variable. This is a continuous variable, so some sort of a scale. And what we're doing is we're asking a question to compare the groups on the scale. So does being in this group have any effect on your answer for this scale? That's when we use ANOVA. These are the kinds of questions. We don't do multiple t-tests for a couple reasons. First of all, if we have a sample and we are making inferences to the population, every inference we make increases our chance of making a type 1 error. So instead of running multiple t-tests, in each time we're increasing that chance of error because we're putting a lot of faith that our sample is really awesome. Instead we do one test, which is an ANOVA that looks at the differences between all of them. And when we do our post hoc tests, we are accounting for trying not to make a type one error or less of a chance. So with a t-test, we are comparing two groups to see if they differ and we get a t-value, we use the t-distribution. With ANOVA, we get an F value. We are using the F distribution. So our t-test uses t, obviously. ANOVA uses F. Conceptually, they're doing the same thing. We're testing differences between groups. They're just different distributions. In fact, if you square t, that's the F distribution. So here's how the whole thing works. We decide we're doing ANOVA. We test the assumptions of observations that, bleh, sorry, of normally distributed observations, variance, so homogeneity of variance, and then independence of observations, we're going to assume through data collection that that is true. We're going to check our significance level. So we run ANOVA, we get our F value, we change the F value to a P value. And by us saying we changed uh, Excel or SPSS give that to you. If our p-value is not significant, if it is greater than 0.05, then there is no difference between the groups. We fail to reject the null hypothesis and we're done. But if we have a significant difference, our p-value is less than 0.05 to be 95% confident, then we are going to compute our effect size, which is eta here. And that's the effect of the ANOVA. So between all the groups, what is our effect size? Then we have to do post hoc tests. We have to tell which groups are actually different. So is the difference between groups one and two, but three is no different than the other two? Is the difference between all three of them? All of that. And then we will compute the effect size for each one that is actually different. So if groups A and B are different, then what is the effect size of that difference? This is the entire ANOVA effect size. These are the individual differences effect size. Assumptions of ANOVA. If we look for a normality, again, we're not looking at normality on the aggregated dependent variable. It's the dependent variable by each group. If we violate that, it tends to be pretty robust, meaning we're not affecting p-values. This is the ideal situation is that everything is normal, but if not, we have some things that we can do. Then we are also checking the variance. This is the homogeneity of variance assumptions. If the groups are approximately equal, then we're robust. If the groups are unequal in size, then this gets a little bit harder to use. But we can still account for violating the homogeneity of variance assumption. Independence of observation is the most important. We assume this through data collection, meaning it is not the same. Each person's score is their own score. We can also check this through an interclass correlation. For this class, we're just going to assume that everything is <laughs> independent through data collection. If we violate normality, 
as long as we have a sufficient sample size, so think about power analysis, larger is better, then we can violate the assumption of normality. The only time that this is really problematic is if you have groups that are small and the smallest group has a platykirchtic distribution, meaning the variance is very spread out for the smallest group compared to others. Then we can get a little bit iffy on affecting our p-values. If we violate homogeneity of variance, this is okay if our sample sizes are equal. So if group A, B, and C are basically all 20, then that's good. Or if one is 15 and one is 20 and one is 22, then we're okay with that too. As long as the groups are within one to 1.5 ratio, then we consider them equal or equal enough. What this does is if we violate homogeneity of variance, it changes which post hoc test that we will use. Independence of observation. If you have people that are working in groups or you are looking at some kind of um, situation where my score is not, is not independent of other people's scores, then ANOVA is not the right test for you to use. All right, so how do we actually do this? Let's look at SPSS. Um, I also will include a video on how to do this with one-way ANOVA in Excel, but SPSS is always preferred.